Welcome, boys and girls. Today, we're going to talk about boomerangs. Boomerangs can come in many different shapes and sizes, and the most commonly known boomerangs are the returning kind, which can come in X shape, L shape, or other shapes. And then we also have the lesser known non-returning or hunting boomerang. Let's first take a look at the hunting boomerang. As I said before, this is a non-returning boomerang which are less commonly known now, but were in fact used much more frequently than returning boomerangs as weapons and for hunting animals. Hunters would throw boomerangs with a spin, and this would make them travel much further and with greater accuracy than just throwing a stick, making them great weapons to hunt with. Unless, of course, the animal dodges your throw, but that's a different problem. And why does a rotating boomerang travel further than a thrown stick? To answer this question, we have to look to Newton's laws of motion. Now, Newton is famous for discovering gravity when an apple fell on his head, but when he wasn't being attacked by apples, Newton was drafting his famous laws of motion, among other things. We'll talk about the first two laws here. Newton's first law states that an object in motion likes to stay in motion, and an object at rest likes to stay at rest unless an external force acts upon that object. Uh, Oops, looks like Newton's getting attacked by apples again. Um, let's move on. Newton's second law states that if an external force does act upon the object, the momentum of the object changes proportionally to the force. Now, if all of that sounds like a lot of gibberish, don't worry, it'll make sense soon. Okay, he looks really mad now. We better get out of here. Now, Newton was talking about motion and momentum in a straight line but his laws can be adapted to be used for movement in a circle as well. But first, let's talk about momentum. Momentum is a measure of mass in motion. So if you look at a bike and a biker in motion, the biker and the bike have linear momentum, which is motion in a straight line. But the wheels of the bike have what's called angular momentum, which is motion in a circle. As Newton said, a body in motion likes to stay in motion. And this is true for circular motion as well. So once you get something spinning, like this top, the angular momentum makes it so that the top wants to continue spinning. And this is why a spinning top stays upright, while a top that is not spinning falls down. Angular momentum is also why quarterbacks put a tight spiral on a football. The spin stabilizes the football and allows the quarterback to throw it with accuracy in a straight line. The same football, when thrown without a spin, wobbles around and then falls to the ground. Now, a spinning hunting boomerang also has angular momentum, and the spin stabilizes the boomerang, and this, my friends, is what allows the hunter to throw at far distances with great accuracy, while a stick just wobbles around and falls to the ground. Now let's talk about returning boomerangs. Returning boomerangs were used as decoys to frighten game birds like ducks. Hunters would throw them in the air, and the ducks would think the boomerangs were predators and stay close to the ground, which then meant that they were easy to hunt with hunting boomerangs. To find out what makes boomerangs return, let's take a quick look back at the bike, which as you might remember, had linear momentum and angular momentum. And in the same way, a thrown boomerang has linear momentum as it moves forward and angular momentum as it spins. And because of the spin, the top portion of the boomerang is actually moving faster than the bottom portion of the boomerang. And because of the difference in velocity, the top portion generates a greater lift force than the bottom portion. Now, lift is what keeps the boomerang in the air. And it's the same thing that airplane wings generate to keep airplanes flying in the air. Now, of course, the airplane doesn't spin, thankfully, while the boomerang does, which creates this difference in lift force between the top and bottom part of the boomerang, which then creates a rotational force, which is called a torque. So let's get back to what Newton said in his second law of motion. And we're gonna adapt this law for circular motion, so it now says, if an external rotational force, or torque, acts upon an object, the angular momentum of the object will change proportionally to the rotational force. And this effect is called gyroscopic precession. So as the boomerang is thrown, it has angular momentum in this direction, and the torque created from the difference in lift forces acts in a perpendicular direction of the angular momentum. And this torque changes the direction of the boomerang's angular momentum, 
which then causes the path of the boomerang to curve. And as the direction of the boomerang changes, the direction of the torque changes. And this then changes the direction of the angular momentum again. And this causes the path to curve again. And this, my friends, is why a properly thrown boomerang curves in a circle and returns to the thrower. Now, most of the physics behind boomerangs wasn't described until very recently, but boomerangs themselves are far older. Now, boomerangs have become synonymous with Australia, and to be fair, boomerangs have been used there for thousands of years. The oldest boomerang found in Australia dates back to 10,000 years ago, and boomerangs were likely in use there even before then. But boomerangs are not just an Australian weapon. The oldest known boomerang in history is about 30,000 years old and was actually found in the Carpathian Mountains in Poland. And boomerangs were even found in King Tut's tomb in ancient Egypt. So boomerangs are far more widespread than is commonly believed. And now that you know the history and science behind boomerangs, it's time to go out and start throwing. Thanks for watching.